What's up, guys? I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to know you. For who you really are. Who you really are. What's up, guys? Come on in. I am just getting ready here. I'm sharing. I'm sharing uh, on these platforms of mine. I'm about to put that back on because I'm rocking out to that song. I'm going to bring that back. How's it going? I am in such a I am in such a worship worship mode. I am worshiping big time. So let me bring this back. Let me bring this back. Bring this back. How's it going out there? What's up, guys? See, it's, it's important, right, that you entertain Holy Spirit. As you guys saw on Sunday, when you entertain Holy Spirit, he, he comes in, right? So you just don't go before God. There's protocol, right? And some of the times, you know, you go before God and you, you speak, you pray. But one way to do it also is singing, right? And then you don't have to have the best voice. Just open your mouth. I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to know you for who you really are. I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to know you. See? For who you really are. It's that's easy. Faithful, faithful, faithful. That's who you really are. Faithful, 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 faithful. That's who you really are. Faithful, 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 faithful. That's who you really are. So I've, I've been in this mode all day. I've been worshiping the Lord all day. And things are exploding. I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to know you for who you really are. That's my cry. I want to know who you really is. I got to know you. I want to know you for who you really are. Yeah. He's faithful. Yeah. That's who you really are. Faithful, 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 faithful. That's who you really are. Yeah. So you gotta warm up the Holy Spirit. You gotta, you gotta bring that worship experience. And when you bring that worship experience, you encounter Him to a higher dimension. You see? Just soak in His presence. And then you come in and whatever he has for you is there. Praise God. Yeah, he's faithful, right? That's who you really are. Faithful, 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 faithful. That's who you really are. See, God wants to hear that. He wants to hear the ultimate worship. I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to know you. For who you really are. Man, I'm telling you, I've been in God's presence all day. And it's the most amazing feeling. See, I want to give you protocol. You just don't go in the presence. You got to, he says, enter into my gates with praise and thanksgiving. 
And so you got to find a way to enter in. You just don't go in. You got to go in a certain way. I love the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yeah. He's awesome. A few more minutes, okay? And then we get started. I just want to entertain him some more. Yes. That's who you really are. Faithful, 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 faithful. That's who you really are. I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to know you. For who you really are. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There's something, there's something special happening. There's something unique happening. God has and is shifting some things. I got a testimony I'm going to share with you about one of my, uh, one of my, 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 my son's friends, Kimani. I'm going to share something with you that happened on uh, Yom Kippur Sunday. Mind blowing, right? There's something happening. Can you, let me ask you a question. Can you sense the shift? Can you sense what's going on out there? Can you sense it? There's a deeper level of, 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 of yearning. That's what I'm, I'm, there's a yearning for more. Am I the only one experiencing that? Are you, are you, are you seeing that too? I have a yearning, a desire, a, a stronger fire for more. Praise God. Hold on a second. Hold on. I got to, I got to, I want to, give me a few more moments so I can make sure Holy Spirit is good. And I want to, I want to feel the oil. I want to feel the oil. Give me a second. Give me a second. I'm, I'm not rushing him. I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to know you. For who you really are. I want to know you. I got to know you. I want to know you. For who you really are. My God. Praise God. He's here. I sense his presence. Welcome, Holy Spirit. You are here. We welcome your presence. Do whatever it is that you want to do. I don't have a will. My will belongs to you. I don't have an agenda. My agenda is yours. I'm here to speak to your children. Give me your wisdom. Give me your revelation. Give me your knowledge. Do whatever it is that you want to do. We thank you for it. We thank you that you have angels here. Your ministering spirits. Have your way. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I want to know you. I want to know you. I've been on this. I've been on this all day. All day. All day. All day. For who you really are. I've been in worship all day. All day. What a sweet presence. Hallelujah. Let me just keep this playing. I'm just going to lower it though. Because I just want to. I want to. I want to hear my Holy Spirit. I want to sing to him so badly. My God, how you guys doing out there? How's it going? Praise God. How's it going? How is your day going? How's your week going so far? You guys good? It is so it is so good to be with you guys today. I pray that you guys are having an awesome day, an awesome week. I am still feasting from Sunday. Sunday service was absolutely off and on the chain all at the same time. I'm telling you, I'm just looking back at the service and seeing how Holy Spirit came in 
and just 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 saturated the place and we all felt his presence the supernatural miracles of God I mean everything that we experienced on uh Sunday my God are you still feasting on Sunday I know I am I'm still feasting on Sunday I want to share something with you guys that we serve a supernatural God supernatural God I want to share a testimony. So you know we had this service on Sunday for Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, right? So here's a testimony. My son's friend, listen to this. I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this. My son's friend really went through repentance on that day. I want you to hear this, okay? And so he went to his phone to use it. And he put his phone to his face. And the face ID did not work. Are you hearing me? Are you are you are you hearing me? This young man repented to the point where his face ID on his phone stopped working. He is truly a new creature in Christ. Come on. I wish I had somebody out there who can celebrate the supernatural God. Haji, he put his phone, he put his face to his phone. He put his face to his phone, Janet. He put his face to his phone, and the phone locked him out. Tanya, he put his face to his phone, and his phone locked him out. Don't tell me what God can't do, Tara. This is supernatural. I'm telling you, we are experiencing the supernatural. Praise God. Can you imagine? He had to actually, Helen, type in an ID because Brid Bridget, his face wasn't working, Candace. It wasn't working. Isn't that wonderful, Keon? Praise God. Hannah, isn't that wonderful? Man. Come on, Melinda. Praise God. I got a couple of things I want to announce to you. Moretta, his phone could not detect his face after he repented on Yom Kippur. Praise God. There's a few announcements I want to announce, and then I'm going to go into this awesome teaching. Praise God. Don't forget... <clears throat> Keep speaking over your target C, okay? Don't stop speaking over your target C. Now, what should you be speaking? Simple, speak the results. Speak the results of your target C. That's it, transfiguration. He transfigured, Sharia, praise God. Don't stop speaking life around the clock over your target C, amen? Continue to speak over your target C. In Jesus' name. Number two, praise God. We are moving into the month of October. And October is Clergy Appreciation Month. And I'm just putting it out there because we want to make sure that we show appreciation and honor to those who serve us. Praise God. If you're not part of this ministry and you're just tuning in, if someone feeds you, uh, on Sundays and on Bible studies and supporting your family with prayer and all of that, support clergy. It's important. This is not a job. This is not a career. It's a calling. I'm going to stop right here for a second because it's a difference. This is not a job or a career. It's a calling. And when you are in your calling, the thing that makes you feel the most appreciative is when someone shows you appreciation. When, when you are in a calling, nothing, nothing satisfies you. Nothing. Nothing. You can't satisfy me with anything. But when you show honor and appreciation, that's when I'm like, wow. Okay, that's my one moment to say, okay, God, praise God. The people who, 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 who trust me, they believe in me, they appreciate me. You follow me? But, man, if I don't feel the appreciation, man, that's, it's tough. You follow? Because I'm going to tell you something, right? Appreciation is fuel to my engine. I want you to hear me on that. Appreciation is fuel to my engine. So, you know, praise God. You guys make sure that you guys are in line to whatever the planning committee put there because I need to feel appreciated. I serve with all my heart, soul, and strength. So make sure, okay? Lastly, November 19th, we are having a ceremony for every single minister who is in helps. We are going to have a, 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 a ceremony for ministries of helps. 
Invite your family and your friends. It's going to be a great situation there. Praise God. Do me a favor if you don't mind. Press the share button right now as I share the word of God with you. <clears throat> I got a great word for you. I want you to help me to evangelize and get the word out. So would you please do me a favor and press the share button right now. And I thank you in advance for giving me a platform so that I can share the word of God. And you never know who may hear this message and say yes to Jesus. Amen. Holy Spirit, thank you for your wisdom as I teach. Let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, please. Thank you guys for sharing. Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. You want your family and friends to hear this. So you want to share it because this is revelational. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, please, in the New King James Version. I'm reading out of the New King James Version. And it says here, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Look, the Bible says that if you hunger and thirst for righteousness, then you are blessed. Then it also says that you are, you will be filled. Now, what makes it a blessing is this, that when you hunger and you thirst for righteousness, it is God who feeds you and God who quenches your thirst. My God. You can eat natural food and still be hungry. You could drink natural beverages and still be thirsty. But when you taste and see that God is good, then you are truly blessed. Amen. Now, I want you to see something here, right? There's a deeper level of hunger that I have. I have a level of hunger today that I've never had before. And truthfully speaking, my hunger is intensifying by the minute. Okay? There, there are so many people who want to experience God. There's so many people who want to experience miracles and breakthroughs and healing and restoration and all of these things, right? You want to, you want to experience these things, right? But let me ask you a question. What's the level of your hunger? What's the level of your hunger? Are you pursuing, listen, are you pursuing not the things that you want, not the things that you desire, are you pursuing the one who has what you want and who has the things that you desire? Everything that you want, everything that you care for, everything that you desire, it's in him. It's not in the, it's not in the thing. It's in God himself. So are you hungry enough to pursue God? Now, here's the powerful revelation. When you are hungry enough to pursue God, then you're going to start some things in your life that suits you no purpose. Somebody say wisdom. Janet, it is so good to see you. I was thinking about you today, Janet. Praise God. Listen, let me say this again. Let me say this again. Let me say this again. Here's the revelation for you. When you are hungry for God, right? I'm, I'm going to give you a nutrition plan. And today's teaching, today's teaching is titled, What and Who Feeds You? Today's teaching is titled, What? And who feeds you? Demetria is what? And who feeds you, Tanya? Listen to what I'm saying to you. I want to give you, Sharia, a nutrition plan that would, that, would, that would set your soul on fire and would starve the enemy and feed you to the point where the enemy would no longer have any kind of say in your life, okay? Now listen, when you're hungry for God, when you are starving for God, when you are thirsty for God, that means that the only thing, Mother Randolph, now follow me on this, the only thing that can, that can, that can satisfy your appetite and your, and your thirst is God, nothing else. So that means that you're turned off from any other nutrition plan. I'm, I'm going to talk to you about nutrition. You're, you're going to be turned off from anything else that doesn't come from God. So if you're hungry for God and you're thirsty for God, 
The reason why you're blessed is because he's the one who feeds you and he's the one who quenches your thirst. My God, my God, my God. Now, here is the powerful revelation. When God feeds you and God quenches your thirst, he satisfies you. Listen to this. He satisfies you to the point where anything other than what he gives you will become a dissatisfaction. I wish I had some people who would really get excited about what I'm saying. You want to win this battle that you're struggling with. You want to win the battle with the anger. You want to win the battle with being weak in this moment. Or you want to win the battle with falling short here. It's simple. Change your diet. Change your diet. Pursue God. Don't pursue things. Because how many of you, how many of you guys know that you can have things, right? You can have things. You can have things and still be hungry. You can have things and still be thirsty. But, Keon, once you taste God, once you drink of the Lord, nothing else will satisfy you. Nothing else. Now, I'm going to go deeper, okay? What you hunger for and what you thirst for determines what you get and what you experience in life. I'm going to say that again. What you hunger for and what you thirst for determines what you get out of life. What is the first thing that Satan attacked in the Garden of Eden? Huh? What is the first thing... <clears throat> That Satan attacked in the Garden of Eden. Genesis chapter 3. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 3. He said to the woman. The serpent said to the woman. Did God really say that you cannot eat from that tree? The first thing that God. The, the first thing that Satan attacked Adam and Eve with was their hunger. He attacked their appetite. He attacked what they ate. He, he attacked their nutrition. So that's why your nutrition is of great value. He attacked their nutrition. He says that God really say you should not eat of this of this of this fruit. See? He went for their hunger. He went for their appetite. Now, let me give you another word for hunger, another word for thirst, another word for appetite. Okay, you ready? So here is the word. Here is another word for hunger, another word for thirst, and another word for appetite. It's called desire. What you thirst for and what you hunger for is what you desire. What you thirst for and what you hunger for is what you desire. So your desire is equivalent to what you eat and what you drink. You got it? Your desire determines what you eat and what you drink. Listen to this. Listen to this. Your desire determines... Who and what you listen to. Your desire determines who and what you hang around. Your desire determines everything. So, Satan knew that if I could just tamper with their appetite, if I could just tamper with their thirst, I can change the course of their life. Come on, somebody say wisdom, please. Somebody say wisdom. Somebody say wisdom. Somebody say wisdom. Somebody say wisdom. You can tell where you're going by what feeds you. You can tell where you're going by what quenches your thirst. You can tell where your life would head, where your life would end up. You can tell, listen to this wisdom family. You can tell where your life is going to end up by your nutrition. I've come to a place 
Mother, I've come to a place. I've come to a place. Mom, I've come to a place. Maurice, I've come to a place. Dietrich, I've come to a place where I don't want drama around me. I've come to a place where I don't want strife. I've come to a place where I refuse to argue. I've come to a place where cuss words don't, don't sound good to me. I've come to a place where certain movies I can't watch. I've come to a place where I would not listen to certain songs. It's because I've changed my diet. Now, these movies and these songs some time ago, they fed me. But when you elevate in God, when you elevate in God, listen to me. The more you elevate in God, the more your nutrition takes on a different path. The more you elevate in God, the more you take on a different nutrition, you take on a different beverage, because the things that once fed you and the things that once quenched your thirst does not do it for you any longer. I've come to a place where feeding me old manna don't work for me. I need something fresh. I need fresh manna. I've come to a place where drinking that bitter water no longer tastes sweet. I've come to a place of evolving for one reason. One reason. One reason. One reason. My hunger for God changes what I yearn for. I have a strong hunger. I am dissatisfied with certain things. So therefore, I can't be around those things. I can't be around those people. I can't watch that movie. I just can't. Everyone has their own level of hunger. But you should have hunger. Some people have more hunger than others. That's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right. Don't compare your hunger to someone else's hunger. That's not what you want to do. Because what feeds them and what feeds you are two different things. But what I am saying is, just don't live life without having a hunger for God. You should not live life not having a hunger. In other words, don't be satisfied with the person you was two years ago. Don't be satisfied with the person you was last year. If you're satisfied with the individual that, who you were last year or two years ago, then you don't have hunger, so now you can't grow. So let me, let me go a little deeper with this. The reason why you want to have hunger is because hunger means that you're growing. Okay? When you eat, it nourishes you. Praise God. It, it gives you the nutrition. It makes you stronger. And it gives you what you need to grow in the spirit. See, naturally, you will stop growing physically. And if physically, at some point, you, you're just going to stop growing. You, you're not going to... You know, if this is your height, this is your height, you're not going to get any taller. That's as tall as you're going to be. Praise God. Some of us are midgets in the spirit realm and giants naturally. And some of us don't have that much height naturally, but we're giants spiritually. All because of our hunger. How? Isn't that wonderful? The more hunger you have in the realm of the spirit, the more you grow. And there is no limitations to how much you can grow, how tall you can be, how wide you can become in the realm of the spirit. There's no limitations. You can be, you can be a giant among giants in the realm of the spirit. In the realm of the spirit, you can be 30 feet tall. A hundred feet tall, depending upon your nutrition. How hungry are you? You want to experience God. Ebony, you want to experience God. Sharia, you want to experience God. Melinda, you want to experience God. The only way to experience God differently 
is to not get used to yesterday's manner. Wow. Demetria, the only way, Dana, the only way to experience God is to not get used to yesterday's feeding. If you ever get used to yesterday's feeding, you won't grow. Do you know, I shared this last week and I'll share it again. <clears throat> the angels, the angels are at the throne in heaven. Jesse Duplantis shared this testimony when he went to heaven. Jesse Duplantis said that the angels are around the throne and every time they circle the throne, they say, holy. They say, holy. They say, holy. And the reason why they say holy every single time is every time they circle the throne, they see an aspect of God that they've never seen before. My God. Do you think, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Do you think that God is satisfied with your growth? Do you think that God, do you think, Sharia, that God has said, okay, Sharia has gone as far as she can go. Helen, do you think God has said, okay, Helen, this is as far as you can go. You can't go any further. Do you think that Maurice, do you think that God has said, okay, Maurice, you reached, you reached the pinnacle of who I am in you? Absolutely not. There's so much more to God. Jimmy, there's so much more to God, but you won't experience so much more to God if you're still eating that stale bread from yesterday. Remember, he told them, I'm going to give you fresh manna. I'm going to give you fresh manna. How often? He said, every single day, I'm going to give you fresh. I'm, I'm going to give you fresh bread. He says, I'm going to give you fresh bread. Somebody write fresh bread. Somebody write that for me in the comment section. Fresh bread. I want you to write fresh bread. I want you to write fresh bread. I want you to write fresh bread for me. Fresh bread. And give me capital F and capital B because fresh bread is not a thing. Fresh bread is a person. I want you to write that for me in the comment section, please. I appreciate the capital F and the capital B. I want you to give that to me in the capital letters, capital F and capital B, because fresh bread is not a thing. Fresh bread is a person. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. He said to them, I don't want you eating yesterday's bread. He says, whatever you didn't eat yesterday, don't eat it today because I'm going to give you fresh bread. I'm going to give you a new insight in me. I'm going to give you a new revelation. I'm going to give you a new insight. If you eat the old bread, you would not recognize the new. Praise God. Come on, come on, come on. The reason why God gave you fresh bread is because that old bread won't allow you to experience him. I got revelation for you. Somebody write for me revelation. Somebody, somebody write the word revelation for me as my Holy Spirit is speaking to me. Praise God. I want to know you for who you really are. I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to know you for who you really are. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Here is revelation. Every time the Israelites ate bread, they encountered a different facet of Jesus because he is the bread of life. And so if he gave them fresh bread, what he was doing was he was giving them an encounter on, on Sunday that they did not have on Saturday. He was giving them an encounter on Monday 
that they did not have on Sunday. So every time he gave them, come on, fresh bread, they were experiencing and encountering Jesus at a higher dimension. It was the fresh bread that gave them a deeper understanding, gave them a deeper revelation, gave them a more intensified relationship based on what they were chewing. And it's scriptural because it says here that man should not eat, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now, now let me let me let me let me let me get let me get deep now on this. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 4 that man should not live by bread alone, but he shall live by every word that comes out of his mouth. You got it? Now if we live by the word, then who is the word? John chapter 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that light was the light of man. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not comprehended. Praise God. So, so the bread is the word, and the word is the bread, and the word and the bread is Jesus. So every time they ate bread, they was eating the word, and they have, Lord, have mercy. I'm about to go. Let me, let me slow down. Every time, Lord, have mercy. Every time they ate bread, they ate the word. And when they ate the word, they taste Jesus. That was a type and shadow of what's to come. The, the church in 2023 got to get back to eating the word. See, see, we're not hungry for the word. We're hungry for the promises of the word. Can I talk to you? Can I talk to you? Here's the problem. Saints of God, I'm giving you revelation. Hold on, hold on. For who you really are. I want to know you. For who you really are. I want to know you. For who you really are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit said. That we are hungry. Listen. We are hungry. For what the word promises. But we're not hungry for the word. Listen. As long as you're hungry. For the promises of the word, but you're not hungry for the word, you're, 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 you're not going into protocol. You got to go through him to get it. You don't skip him and go to the promises because the promises is him. Listen, all God's promises are yes and amen. Listen to me now in Christ. So now your hunger should not be for the promises. Your hunger should be for the word because the word is Jesus and all the promises are connected to him. In all reality, all the promises are in him. So if you're, if you're pursuing the promises and not pursuing the word, you'll miss it because the promises are not independent from the word. Lord, have mercy. Good God Almighty. Woo! Come on, man. Listen. Listen, your healing is not independent from the word. Your peace of mind is not independent from the word. Your financial freedom is not independent from the word. You can't, you, you can't leapfrog. You can't leapfrog. See, all of, God, all of God's promises are yes and amen in Christ. So if you get in Christ... You're getting into the word, right? But you, you're also getting into your nutrition because the word is the bread of life. Lord, have mercy. So could it be, could it be that saints of God are not seeing the promises because they're more consumed with the promises than being consumed in the word? Could that be the reason why so many saints of God are frustrated 
So many saints of God are not seeing what they are praying for, what they are believing for, what they are hoping for. Could it be that we are looking for the promises, but we are, we are bypassing the word, which means we have a greater hunger for the promises than we do for the promise keeper. I got to bring that back. I got to bring that back. Could it be? Could it be? Listen, listen. Could it be, Jimmy? Could it be? I'm just asking a question. Patsy, I'm asking a question. I just, Tanya, I am asking a question. My question is, Helen, could it be that we have, Mother Randolph, I'm asking a question. I'm, I, I am asking a question. I just need your help with this, Ashley. I'm asking a question. Could it be that we have been, we have become so consumed in the promises that we have more of a hunger and a taste for the promises and we don't have a hunger or a taste for the word. Could that be? In Proverbs, in Proverbs chapter 8, let me find it, verse 17, if I'm not mistaken. In Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17, if I'm not mistaken. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17 says this. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17. Listen to this. I love those who love me. Those who earnestly seek me will find me. Listen, listen. I want to read it in a, I want to read it. Well, I already know the scripture. Let me just tell it to you in the NIV version. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17 to 18. I'm going to just tell you it in the NIV version. I love those who love me. Those who seek me early will find me. Listen, riches and honor are with me. Yes, durable riches and righteousness. So people are pursuing wealth. People are pursuing riches. But you, you missed it. The wealth and the riches is not outside of him. It's in him. So if it's in him, then you should pursue him. But now I'm going to really bless you. Can I, can, I, can I really bless you? Can I really bless you? Do I have your permission to bless you right now? Come on, talk to me out there. Can I bless you? Can I bless you? Can I bless you? Here is the profound revelation. Praise God. If all of the promises, Bridget, I want, I want, to, I want to bless you, Bridget. I'm telling you, I want to bless you. Demetria, I, I, I want to bless you. I want to bless you, Melinda. I want to bless you. I want to bless you. Janet, I want to bless you. Keon, I'm going to bless you right now in the name of Jesus. Patsy, here's, here's your blessing. Here's your blessing. Here's your blessing. Here's your blessing. Sharia, here's your blessing. All of God's promises, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. All of God's promises are yes and amen in Christ. In Christ. In Christ. In Christ. Where is Christ? Where, 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 where is he? Colossians chapter 1 verse 27 says, Christ in me, the hope of glory. So listen, listen, listen. We've been tricked. We've been tricked, right? We are pursuing the blessings. We are pursuing the things. But everything that you're looking for and desiring is in Christ, right? But Christ is not outside of you. Christ is where? He's in you. 1 John 4.4. 4. Greater is he who is in me. Come on, talk to me. 1 John 4.4. 4. 
Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. So if Christ is in you and the promises of Christ is in Christ, then what you got to do is, Janet, get in Christ. And when you get in Christ, you will discover, praise God, what you're looking for. Because what you're looking for ah, is in you because it's in Christ. In Proverbs chapter 8, it says, I love those who love me, and those who seek me early would find me. Then he says, riches. So listen to this. Listen, listen, listen. Listen. Riches and honor are with me. So listen. That scripture simply means that you go on an expedition. Follow me on this. That scripture means that you go on, a, on an expedition searching. Okay, I'm going to give you revelation. Somebody said, somebody just say, thank you, Holy Spirit. I want somebody to say, I want somebody to say, thank you, Holy Spirit. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There's an elevation here. Come on, there's an elevation. There's, a, there's an elevation. Do, do you feel the Holy Ghost? Somebody say, thank you, Holy Spirit. Raise your voice up, type it for me. Thank you, Holy Spirit, and give him his capital letters. Don't lowercase Holy Spirit. I love those who love me and those who seek me. Seek me. That means you're going on an expedition digging. But where are you digging? You're not digging for nothing on the outside. Listen. If Christ is in you and the promises are in you, if you search for Christ, he's in you. So when you start digging, you're not digging externally. You're digging internally because Christ took the treasures and he put it on the inside of you. Glory be to God. Woo! Good God Almighty. Mother Randolph, you're not digging for something outside of you. Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, lives in you. And the promises of God are in the Holy Spirit. And he took himself, Dietrich, and he put himself in you. So when you start to dig and looking for the promises, you got to go through Jesus. But the good news is that Jesus is not far. The Bible says that he's closer to you than, than a brother. Praise God. I'm telling you that what we've been doing is we've been looking outside for what God put on the inside. Glory be to God. So what you got to do is you got to turn this thing around and you got to start to dig. But you only dig for what you value. Come on, write that for me in the comment section. You only dig for what you value. Write that for me in the comment section for who you really are. I want to know you. I want to know you. I got to know you. For who you really are, I want to know you, I want to know you, I want to know you, for who you really are. There are so many things about God that you will not discover. Because you're not hungry enough to dig. We've been told. Just claim it. Claim it. Just claim it. It's going to come. Just claim it. Well, claiming, claiming is fine. I am all for claiming. But you can't claim what you do not dig for. Or... You can't claim what you don't pursue. See, you can only claim what you pursue. It's in your pursuit. Claiming comes through your pursuit. For who you really are. Why do you think I am flowing the way I'm flowing? Because I want to know you. I have abandoned everything. I have abandoned everything. Listen to me. You're looking at a person who has abandoned 
everything. I have forsook it all. I surrender all, all to Jesus, blessed Savior. I surrender all. I have surrendered everything. I don't care about nothing. Here's my prayer. You ready? Here's my prayer. Holy Spirit, intensify my hunger. Oh, God. If we can just get the church as a unified body to cry out, fit for the kingdom, I need you to do me a favor. On Saturday, on Saturday, while you pray for the ministry and pray for yourself and your family, this is your prayer. Holy Spirit, intensify my hunger. When you come to church this Sunday, this Sunday, this first Sunday, when we, when we pray for one hour and you come to church fasting, this is the universal prayer I want you to pray. Please do me a favor as a church body. Do, I'm going to send out a text message. This is, the, this is the unified prayer. Holy Spirit, intensify my hunger. If you ask him to intensify your hunger, then what you're doing is you're allowing him to not only give you a hunger, but he's the only one that can feel it. I want to know you for who you really are. I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to know you. For who you really are. When you start to sing that, do you know how intense that is? Do you know what you're saying? Holy Spirit, intensify my hunger. Oh, my God. I came today to mess with your nutrition. With the few minutes I have left, I'm almost done. If God is not occupying all of your taste buds, if God is not occupying your thirst, then you will never experience the depthness, the deepest parts, the submarine level of God. You're asking for it. You're hoping for it. You're wishing for it. But see, and see what this does is, you ready? What this does is this right here. It makes you wealthy. Let me tell you why it makes you wealthy. When you lose the appetite for the things of this world, now you have access to everything the kingdom has because God can trust someone who has the proper nutrition. I wish I had somebody to write that. God can trust someone who has the proper nutrition. I wish someone would write that for me. God can trust someone who has the proper nutrition. God can trust someone who has, and when you write it, say it. Don't, don't write it. You have to say it. All of you have to be engaged because God can trust someone. And see, you can't fool God, right, Keon? Because God knows what your taste buds are based on what you pursue. God knows your taste buds because what you hunger for, you pursue. Taste and see that God is good. Well, how can you taste if you don't read the word? How can you taste if you don't fast? How can you taste if you don't sing? How can you taste if you don't repent? You can't taste if you don't do things that promotes that. So let me give you four things to do. Four things to do. And then I'm gone. Number one. Number one. Petition Holy Spirit daily to increase your hunger for him. Number one, number one, 
Petition. Petition. Holy Spirit, intensify my appetite. Holy Spirit, remove that. Holy Spirit, change that appetite. I don't want to eat of that old manner. Holy Spirit, give me fresh bread. I want to know you for who you really are. Every day. Every day. Number one. Number one. Write this down. Number one. Petition Holy Spirit daily to increase your hunger for him. Petition Holy Spirit daily to increase your hunger for him. Daily. Daily. Don't skip a day. Every single day I'm hungry for you. Oh, I hunger for you. Praise God. Number two. Pray for God to remove anything or anyone who doesn't spiritually feed your soul. Number two. Number two. Pray for God to remove anything or anyone who doesn't spiritually Feed your soul. Number two, pray for God. Pray for God. Pray for God to remove anything or anyone who doesn't spiritually feed your soul. I, I, I'm, I'm going to say it again. Write this down. Number two, pray for God to remove anything or anyone who doesn't spiritually Feed your soul. That's strong. Pray for God. To remove anything or anyone who doesn't spiritually feed your soul. That's it. Pray for God. Write it down. Pray for God to remove anything or anyone who doesn't spiritually feed your soul. Praise God. Number three, number three, pursue daily the presence of Holy Spirit. Pursue it. Number three, pursue daily the presence. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. You gotta, you, you gotta let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Pursue daily the presence of Holy Spirit. Praise God. Number four. Partner with Holy Spirit. When it comes to changing your taste buds. Number four. Partner. With Holy Spirit. When it comes to changing your taste buds. Number four. Partner. With Holy Spirit. When it comes to changing your taste buds. Number four. Partner. With Holy Spirit. When it comes to changing your taste buds. He can't do it without your involvement. So this is not a job for God. It's a unified movement. I want to know you. I want to know you. For who you really are. I want to know you. I want to know you. 
I want to know you for who you really are. I want to know you. I want to know you. I have to know you for who you really are. Hallelujah. That's who you really are. Faithful, 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 faithful. That's who you really are. He's faithful. Yeah. That's who you really are. I want to know you. I want to know you. I have to know you for who you really are. Hallelujah. Deliverance is here right now. <clears throat> Breakthrough is here right now. Holy Spirit don't show up just because. When he shows up, he moves. Yeah. Yes, that's it right there, for who you really are. It's a Maverick song. I'm going to incorporate that before I even minister moving forward. I, I got to break out. That's Maverick. Yes, Jimmy, that's it right there. Right now, those who are with me still, in your private space where you are, reach out to God. Reach within and say, fill my hunger, Lord. Intensify my hunger. Now fill it. Father, as your sons and daughters are requesting for hunger, as they request hunger and request to be filled, go into the deepest parts of our souls, Daddy. Abba, go into the deepest Parts of our souls, Elohim, Adonai, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Sikunu, Jehovah Shama, Jehovah En Kadesh, Jehovah Rohi, Jehovah Rafa. Go into the deepest parts and put a hunger there to remove the wrong appetite. And provoke us to the point where we dig to be satisfied in you. Oh, take us deeper, Father. Take us deeper, Holy Spirit, as only you can. You are the author and the finisher of our faith. What a mighty God you are. Let us go deeper. Intensify the level of our hunger in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And anyone out there who does not know Jesus as Savior, anyone out there who needs to have a rededication, say, Father, I am lost without you. I want to be in relationship with you. I believe that Jesus is your son. I also believe that Jesus is the only one who can satisfy my hunger through his Holy Spirit. Feed me. Yahshua, feed me. Take me deeper. And I thank you for washing my record clean. There's no sin in my life. Because the blood is on the mercy seat. And the high priest is in the holy of holies. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. We're going to have deeper and deeper spirit-filled services. I have an anointing on me to take us deeper in the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to pay the price to go deeper. Praise God. If you enjoy this teaching, I want you to flood your screen with hearts for Holy Spirit. I am going deeper. Would you join me? Would you join me? Would you join me go deeper? 
Come on, as a ministry, as fit for the kingdom, would you go deep with me? I'm not the only one. Who, who else? By the show of hands, before I go, by the show of hands in the comment section, who else is going to join me in going deeper? Show me your hands. Praise God. That's your commitment to God. Who else is going deeper with me? Come on, I don't see no hands. Where are the hands at? Show me your hands. Praise God. Come on, don't forget, we're fasting. We're fasting going into this Sunday. And then we're going to fast coming to service. Praise God. Fast going into service. Let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. Praise God. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. And be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you. And may the Lord grant you his shalom. Now may the peace of God. That transcends all understanding. Guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. Katrina and I love you all with the love of Christ. We're going to have a blessed service on Sunday. Oh, I can't wait to see what he's going to do. Mm, hallelujah. Thank you guys for tuning in and trusting me. Enjoy the rest of your week. God bless you.